Welcome to the first episode of my 2023 training diaries. And really this season, I should be calling it my travel diaries because I've got just a jam-packed year full of adventure and travel, which got a jump start in early March with a three-week trip to Patagonia. So this episode is gonna be a fairly long one as I show you highlights from our trip, including the eight-day guided tour that we hosted in partnership with Trova Trip with a really fun group. Our adventure began in Buenos Aires, where we spent a couple of days first running around in the heat and exploring the city before flying over 2,500 kilometers further south to Al Calafate in southern Argentina. We arrived a day early to get settled in before the rest of the group, which gave us time to get organized and to get out for a couple of short runs to explore the nearby lake shore. That evening, we got a briefing from our guide, Cynthia before heading out with the group for a big welcome dinner. This is half of Argentina. And this red part, yeah, the bottom, is Patagonia oh. in Argentina. So here is the Magellan Strait. And here is Puerto Natales and Torres del Paine. So we are going to be in all this area the following days. Okay. So most of Patagonia is like a desert on the Argentinian side. Yeah, most of it is a desert. You will see that tomorrow El Chalten is inside the mountains. So the climate is totally different mm -hmm. and the environment is different. The next day, we got up early to drive three hours north on Route 40 to El Chalten. Route 40 is one of the longest highways in the world, which follows the mountain range all the way through Patagonia and it's considered a classic road trip. We saw our first groups of wild Wanakos, which live in huge numbers throughout the region. Populations flourished after ranchers hunted their only natural predators, the puma, in order to protect their sheep. Most of the land here is privately owned ranch land, which at one point would have been filled with sheep and farmed primarily by immigrants from Europe. The wool industry collapsed following the Second World War, but the fences still remain. Al Chaltin is tucked away in the mountains near the base of Mount Fitzroy. It's considered the trekking capital of Argentina, and it's the gateway to a number of incredible routes. We're going to start from here. We're going to do a stop on a viewpoint where we are going to see our first glacier. We're going to see many glaciers in this hike. So after a quick briefing, we headed out for a short hike up to a viewpoint of Mount Fitzroy, overlooking a beautiful glacial lake. of the glaciation was 15,000 years ago. So this landscape, everything was full of glaciers. Incredible. 
The trail runners in the group then joined us for a short run up to another viewpoint overlooking town where I did a short trail running clinic on uphill and downhill running technique. I can really stride out on a hill, go up the bottom and down on it and get a lot of pressure on those, on those straps. The next day, we got dropped off up the valley at a trailhead for one of the most iconic hikes in Argentine Patagonia, to Laguna de los Tres, at the foot of Mount Fitzroy. A distance of 23 kilometers with over 1,300 meters of elevation gain. Well, we, as you know, we are going to hike as a group today. Uh, here are going to be your company for information and security. <laughs> And then from here, instead of coming back to the same direction, we take a different path. We had some partial views early on, but by the time we reached the lake, the clouds had rolled in and with it the snow, completely obscuring our view of Mount Fitzroy directly above us. And it's now snowing. We've made it to the lake. We're gonna hike up here and around to the back side to get a better view of the glacier. Well, not much of a view today. <laughs> Good thing we had it yesterday, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty here. Yeah, these colors, hey? We got up early the following morning to make the long drive across the Chilean border to Puerto Natales, where we'd spend the next two nights. Puerto Natales rests at the end of a long fjord on the Pacific Ocean. It's the gateway to Torres del Paine National Park, which we'd be exploring for the next couple of days. So we just arrived in Puerto Natales in Chile and uh, we're hungry, <laughs> so we're just walking around looking for some lunch uh, and then we'll meet up with the group to do a little shakeout run before dinner. Being a port town, Puerto Natales was one of the few places in Patagonia with fresh seafood, including scallops, king crab, and my favorite, salmon ceviche, along with, of course, empanadas. 
Most of the cities in Patagonia have a plethora of dogs on the streets, but these aren't your usual strays. They seem for the most part to be quite healthy and very well fed, and they're all super friendly. So basically this was like doggy heaven, both for the dogs and well for me. Caught up with the group for an easy 10K around town. And we were joined by a few locals. The next morning, we left early to make the two hour drive to Torres del Paine National Park for another big day of hiking. Our objective was a lake at the base of Las Torres, a 22 kilometer out and back. So we go up, then we get to the Windy Pass. Today it seems not to be so bad, but always here you must be uh, careful with the wind. It can blow very, very fast, more than 120, but I think today is not that, that day. So we have arrived in Torres del Paine National Park. We're just starting our hike up to Mirador Base Las Torres. Going to base of Las Torres, Base Las Torres for us, one of the most uh, important viewpoints or more famous viewpoint in, in Patagonia. Basically we are doing 20 k's, 13 miles around go and back to get to the lagoon just in front of the towers. And we'll see how, how the weather will be with us. At the moment it's getting more clear, so that's good. We still have more three hours to get there. Hey guys, hey. not bad, eh? It's all right. 
right? Not too bad. Not too bad. I see three peaks. It counts. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. All right, welcome. I've been drinking for 20 years, so I should be dead. Watch out for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We then had just one more day to explore the park before leaving Chile. This time on a shorter point-to-point -point hike starting near a different park entrance. And this time, the weather couldn't have been better, aside from that familiar wind, of course. After lunch, we packed up and drove all the way back across the border to Al Calafate, where we'd started. We did a short run to shake out the legs and to take in the beautiful sunset. Tomorrow, we'd have one last big adventure as a group. Perito Moreno Glacier is located just 78 kilometers from El Calafate in Argentino Lake. Its terminus is five kilometers wide with an average height of 74 meters and with a total ice depth of 170 meters. It covers an area of 250 square kilometers and it's at least 30 kilometers in length. After taking in the view from above, we boarded a boat to get a closer look. Cotton was once considered Patagonia's white gold, but the region's glaciers are now its most important commodity. Let's go out for lunch. Oh yeah, with that view, looking forward. Unlike most glaciers, this one is considered to be stable, meaning it continues to accumulate mass at a rate similar to its loss. But one of the local guides that we spoke to has seen firsthand just how much it has retreated in just the last decade. So apparently just 10 years ago, the glacier reached this moraine over here. This moraine was created just 10 years ago. That's how much this glacier has receded. So the darker the blue, the denser the ice is. And apparently when you get closer to like 20 meters under the ice, it actually can turn purple because it's so dense. How do those feel? It's strange, it's strange. I don't think I would run a, a big race with that. Yeah. <laughs>
Ahora en la falta de baranda, por eso no. ¿Otro? 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 Anybody else for Gocha? Whiskey, whiskey, sorry. Whiskey, anybody else? Whiskey for you? Yes! yes. yes. Woo! We headed back to El Calafate for a final celebratory dinner before saying goodbye to the group the following day. So as you can see, we packed in quite a bit just in those eight days with Trova Trip, but Audrey and I weren't done yet. We took a day to catch up on laundry and for me to do a bit of work before crossing back over the border to Puerto Natales so that we could prepare to return to Torres del Paine to fast pack the O circuit over five nights. We ended up running over 145 kilometers, including some out and backs, with between seven to 8,000 meters of elevation gain plus descent, depending on whose watch you look at. And we faced every type of weather that you could imagine. But that you are going to have to wait to see. I've got what will probably be a 90-minute documentary in the works. I have so much incredible footage. But in the meantime, you can see a bunch of photos that I've been sharing on Instagram in case you're curious. Once we were done, it took a few days to make our way back through Al Calafate and on to Buenos Aires before making the 30-hour or so journey home. So we've been home from Patagonia for just over a week now, and we're already thinking about heading back. I think our favorite place was definitely Al Chaltin, near Mount Fitzroy. It felt a lot like our own Squamish British Columbia, tucked away in the mountains with a bunch of trails that leave right from town. So that's probably where we'd plan to spend more time when we do eventually go back. And Trova Trip actually does offer an itinerary that does just that. So if this looked like a good time to you and you think you might want to join us on this or a similar trip, then I will link to a survey below with this and a few other possible destinations to choose from. We're also excited about the idea of visiting Iceland with the group, maybe next summer, and possibly doing a trek in Nepal. So fill out that survey if you're interested in having some inputs, and don't forget to sign up for my newsletter as well to be the first to hear about any future trips that we do launch. Over the first couple of weeks here in April, I've been doing some final training, mostly trying to get a bit of speed back in my legs as I prepare for my next adventure, which I'll tell you all about in episode two towards the end of the month. I'll be spending a week in Flagstaff with a group of friends so that we can run in the Grand Canyon. So stay tuned for that and much, much more throughout the season. <laughs>